We're going to solve now a problem that involves friction. We're going to talk about a hockey puck sliding along the ice. Since we're talking about ice, we might think that friction is not terribly important, but certainly when one slaps a ho hockey puck along, it eventually does slow and come to a stop. If we say that this particular hockey puck is initially moving at a speed of 20 meters per second, and it steadily slows down over the next 120 meters before coming to a halt, I can ask a set of questions including what is its acceleration during this time? And using that information, can we derive the coefficient of kinetic friction as the hockey puck is sliding, sliding along the ice? The first part of our question is simply a kinematics question. When we're given the initial velocity and the final position when, by which it's come to a halt, and we want to derive the acceleration, that's going back to our simple expressions for one-dimensional motion. So we think back, and our expressions are that x is a function of time is equal to an initial position plus initial velocity times time plus one-half times the acceleration times t squared. We don't know at what time it's come to a halt, but this, would exp this expression gives us the, the position at that time. The second expression, which we're familiar with, is that the velocity is a function of time equals an initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And we know that when the object comes to a halt, this velocity t v of t has to equal zero, and the position x as a function of t has to equal 120 meters. Well, plugging in that v of t equals zero allows us to solve that t is minus v naught over a. So that tells us what the time is at which it will stop. We can plug that time now back into our first expression for the position as a function of time, and we arrive at 120 meters equals zero, because we're going to say the initial position is zero, plus v naught times that time, plus one half a v naught over a squared, where again I've inserted what is the value for the time at which the hockey puck is stopped. The first term in this on the right hand side is zero, but the second two terms are each proportional to v squared over a, because in the third term here, there's an a in the numerator, but an a squared in the denominator, so it's like one over a. And in fact, this just equals minus one half v naught squared over a. We wanted to solve for the acceleration, so we're going to move a to the left hand side and 120 meters down over to the right hand side, and we have that the a acceleration a is minus one half v naught squared over 120 meters. If we plug in for v naught squared, that's 40, 20 meters per second quantity squared, and that will equal 400 meters squared over second squares, or that acceleration is minus 1.67 meters per second squared. Notice that the acceleration is negative. That indicates that the, velo the velocity is constantly decreasing, and that's precisely what's happening. We had a velocity that was initially positive, but ramps down to zero. And when that happens, when a uh, speed is decreasing, we know that the acceleration vector has to point in the opposite direction, or the negative direction, if the velocity vector is pointing in the positive direction. So now we have the acceleration. What good does that do us? We'll use that acceleration in answering the second part of our question, which is to derive the kinetic coefficient of friction. Part B requires using Newton's laws. We're going to write down a free body diagram for this object. So if we look, think about all the forces going on, there's gravity pulling downward, so this hockey puck has a mass m, whatever that m is, we haven't been told, and its gravitational force downward is mg, there's a normal force pointing up, and there's a kinetic force of friction pointing in the backward direction. There's absolutely no force pointing in the forward direction after we've given the slap from the hockey stick. That's important to remember because even though it's initially moving at some speed in the positive direction, there is no longer a force in the positive direction. If we write down Newton's laws in both the x and y direction, y being the vertical and x being the horizontal, then we have that mass times acceleration in the y direction is the sum of forces in the y direction, and mass times acceleration in the x direction is equal to the sum of the forces in the x direction. In the y direction, there are two forces, the normal force and the gravitational force, and if I define the positive y direction as up, 
then the proper signs here are to say that m times a sub y is equal to n minus mg. And since the acceleration in the y direction is zero, this equals zero, which allows me to solve and say that the normal force equals mg. I'm going to use that in just a moment. Because in the x direction, there's only one force, that's minus f sub k, because I'm saying that the positive x direction is to the right, where the hockey puck is moving. And the frictional kinetic force of friction is equal to mu k times n. So m times a sub x is equal to minus mu k times n. Now using my expression for n, that equals minus mu k times mg. Or that mu k, the kinetic coefficient of friction, equals minus ma over mg. The masses will cancel in that expression, and the coefficient of friction will just be minus a over g. I can plug in my value for a from the part a of this problem, which is minus 1.67 meters per second squared, and I divide by g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And I get a value from uk, which is 0.17. Notice that the mass of this hockey puck canceled out altogether in this expression. It doesn't matter whether this was a hockey puck, or a crate, or a truck. It would still slow down if given that same speed in the same amount of time.